My compass has no fluid. Look at it spin. In this video, I will take my compass apart to remove the rubbery parts, the O-rings and the diaphragm, and to replace the compass fluid. My compass is a Ritchie Globemaster 5-inch stainless steel binnacle mount, 1994 model SP5. To do this disassembly, I downloaded the parts and service manual from the Ritchie website. I'll include a link in the description below. The compass has four components. The light assembly, the binnacle, the capsule, and the mounting base. The light assembly and binnacle are held in place with two screws. We'll start the disassembly there. The binnacle was a tight fit on the mounting base. It took a little work to get it off. If your compass is still on your boat, the wires for the lighting assembly will still be attached. Lift the binnacle just enough to be able to slide the lighting assembly towards the dome. After the binnacle is off, the light wire can be disconnected and the light assembly removed. Next, I took off the top end of the compass. Eight screws hold down the bezel. With the bezel removed, the dome and the dome's O-ring can be removed. The bezel came off easily. The dome was a bit more challenging. It sits flat in a groove or a trough. I was able to get it up by getting the blade of a utility knife under the lip of the dome. The O-ring came off with the dome. I peeled the O-ring off the dome. Next to come out was the gimbal assembly. The gimbal ring hangs on two brass bosses led into the bowl. The pins of the gimbal ring slip into the brass bosses. Here are the two brass bosses. I used a small screwdriver to lever the bosses out of their seats. Taking out the gimbal, I was careful not to damage the balance tab attached to the bottom of the gimbal ring assembly. The last to be removed is the diaphragm retainer and the diaphragm. Both are held in place by screws led into the diaphragm retainer. I used the holes in the retainer to grab it and lift it out. I slipped two small screwdrivers into the holes into the diaphragm retainer. Knitting needles with hooks at the end would work great for this. I'm being careful here because the diaphragm came with the diaphragm retainer. 
The diaphragm had a small amount of fluid with it. As I took the compass apart, I kept an eye out for the pieces that had to be oriented correctly when it went back together. There were only two, the gimbal assembly and the bezel. Orientation begins with the mounting base. The vertical gap in the base faces forward. One of the gimbal bosses is directly above this gap. The gimbal's main lubber line attaches to this boss. The bezel has a series of holes that face forward. My bezel also had an indent for the light wire that faced forward. Here you can see how the mounting assembly, bezel, and lubber line all align. I ordered my parts, O-rings, diaphragm, and compass fluid from Viking Compass. I'll put a link to their website in the description. Reassembly was pretty much the reverse of disassembly. I decided to oil the rubber parts as I installed them. I do this with my oil filters and I figured it wouldn't hurt here. The diaphragm retainer was fiddly to get into place. I moved it several times to get the first screw lined up. carefully torqued down the screws for both the diaphragm retainer and the bezel. Richie has used Isopar L since 2001. My 1994 Compass had a sticker on it saying it was filled with Isopar L, which I guess means that the fluid in my compass has been replaced once before. Older compasses were filled with odorless mineral spirits. Note that spirits, not oil. With the first syringe plunge, I realized I could have filled the bowl to its brim before clamping down the dome. That would have saved me many more syringe plunges. As the fluid bubble got smaller, it moved out of sight. I picked up the compass and rocked it up to see the size of the bubble and to reposition the compass so the bubble was right under the fill hole. I was happy with the results. The remaining bubble was very small and I could live with that. What I couldn't live with, a gimbal and a compass card askew. Did I damage the gimbal? I drained the fluid and checked the gimbal. It was fine. I refilled the compass, still askew. Do I have a bubble under the gimbal? I drew down the fluid again, and this time filled the bowl to its brim with fluid, trying to keep a bubble from forming. That didn't work either. The final solution was to turn the compass upside down so that the gimbal jammed and no longer gimbaled 
and then the bubble could escape from under the gimbal's ring. I'm pretty sure the gimbal jammed when I started with one of the gimbal bosses straight up. Richie degasses their fluid under a vacuum. I found a good forum site discussing how to do it DIY. I'll put the link below. The forum suggested putting the compass in the freezer overnight, so that's what I did. I took a peek after about 12 hours to see what was happening. Yep, it's cold. Wait, did I see? There. It's bubbles. After 24 hours, I pulled the compass out. Did it make a difference? I think so. Not much, but a difference. I opened up the compass and topped her off. I expected the fluid to expand as it warmed, so I kept the fill plug out overnight. The next morning I had a big bubble, and I didn't know if it was from evaporation or if I had a leak. I marked the bubble outline with a grease pencil and let the compass sit overnight. I was lucky there was no leak, so I filled the compass for the final time, rocking away the last bubble.